Hey everyone, today's quick video is to show you how you could begin simple sculpts by making your own liquid latex paste. I began pouring about half a cup of liquid latex into a bowl and also about a half a cup of flour and I sift that in. Now I'm using half a cup because I am using this paste to sculpt over the majority of one side of my face so a little bit actually does go a long way and you need to sift your flour to get rid of the lumps or any other imperfections that might be in the flour. Now I use all-purpose flour because it's very fine and I, that's what I prefer my textures to be and you can use several different types of flour. Um, just keep in mind that the grainier the less smooth that your sculpt is going to be. Now I start from the center and I work my way out and I do this very slowly. You don't want to mix very fast because it will clump and it will dry quickly. And if the ingredients are not completely mixed in and it's not a paste that you can work with or it's not enough, you continue to add liquid latex until you get enough, until you get the texture and the smoothness that you want. And you might have to do this several times, but it's better to make more and not need it than have to constantly stop and make more. I normally use half a cup because uh, I sculpt mostly on the face and I almost always have more than what I need but never enough to where it's wasteful. So if you want to play around with it just start with a half and a half the one to one ratio and I think that would um, get you on your way to get familiar with the product and how to use it and how to sculpt with it. Your goal is to make a paste that's not so runny that it drips and falls off of the tool that you're using to mix it. It's thick enough and it will hold and you can manipulate it. Now that my ingredients are incorporated, I take a plate and pour a small amount of liquid latex onto it and I use this to protect my tools and to protect my sculpt. When you dip your tools into latex when you're moving, your sculpt around and I use my finger most of the time when I sculpt instead of tools um, and in the beginning uh, finer details I use tools when the latex begins to dry a little bit more and you can see those so it takes about maybe an hour if you need to go in and add fine details that you want to show up in your sculpt after you do this process of laying it down on your face cast or whatever surface that you're going to be sculpting on it is very uh, malleable and easy to work with and it hasn't set up and if you were to move your tools in throughout this mixture you're not going to get that detail it's going to kind of bleed out so I just take my mixture and if I this is the point where if it's too much you remove it and you work with it and the reason why in this process that I like to use my finger is so that I can actually feel the areas that need to be built up, the areas that need to be thinner, and it's just easy for me to figure that out by the feel of using my, my hands and my fingers. But um, whenever you glide your tools or your fingers across to smooth out a texture on your paste and it starts to lift up, that's the time that you need to dip your tools and your fingers back into the latex. Now in this state, you do have a good amount of time to be able to work with your paste because it takes about an hour for it to dry and so um, I believe in this portion of the that you see that I'm working with here I probably worked with it about 30 minutes and once I had the achieved look I let it set up to dry a little bit um, so I could go back in and put some finer details using smaller tools and things like that now you can if you need to put air on it you can set it up under a fan some people like to pop it in the microwave I tend to not do that um, because I like things to sit up a little bit more natural it gives me the opportunity to know how fast it dries if you have to leave it alone and if you don't have to go back in and use heat or anything like that and normally after I I've done all my detail work I normally wait two days before I begin to try to remove the, the prosthetic and the sculpt that I made before I do any painting or do anything and apply it to the face or anything like that
It's time to add finer details into this sculpt. It has dried for about an hour and a half and you can see that I'm taking my tool and I'm pressing in to the paste and you see that the details remain crisp and clear. So the longer you let it dry, if it's not working for you, and this is real easy, if you do this and you still are not getting the look that you need and you get a dent, an indention from your tool in it, you can take your finger and move over and smooth out that texture. So yeah, don't be afraid to play with it guys and have some fun. This is the look I created and after the paint. This is a close up detail on application day and a very close up of all the details after I added the beads. So thank you guys for watching this short video. I hope it helped you out in some way and please leave your comments below and I'll see you next time. Bye.